today's episode, revealing the top eight Amazon product image strategies of seven and eight figure brands. On Amazon, product images are a focal point for new customers browsing billions of products available and a key driver of click-through rate, sales, and customer satisfaction. I'm Jason Boyce, founder and CEO of Avenue 7 Media, co-author of the Amazon Jungle and host of the Day 2 Podcast. With me today is my co-host, Shanna Roddy, Amazon strategist, educator, and biz dev lead at Avenue 7 Media. Shannon, what's cooking? You know, I'm really excited and looking forward to Amazon Accelerate that our team's going to be ah, uh, yeah. ending in September. I yeah. just bought, booked my plane ticket last night. And so if you're a seller, you have not booked your ticket already, go ahead and book online because those spots will fill up. It was a great conference last year. I really enjoyed it. I'm super excited that we're bringing a larger team this year. And uh, I think it's going to be great. We learned a lot, made some really fun connections and met some really great brands and sellers. I couldn't agree more, Shannon. I'm really looking forward to it. It's funny, uh, rewind back to last year, I really didn't know what to expect. In fact, I talked to a lot of friends in the industry I had uh, very low expectations for Accelerate, and I was really pleasantly surprised. If for no other reason, you got to hear from Amazon's own mouth what the new launches were going to be, what the beta programs were going to be in the coming year. And um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to see what they've got uh, scheduled for the rest of this year and into 2024. So, And it's always great to hang out live and in real life with you and the rest of the uh, rest of the team um, at, at Amazon Accelerate, Shannon. So Jason, last year at Accelerate, uh, some really interesting news dropped right in the middle of the conference. What interesting news do we have going on now that uh, that could impact Amazon brands and sellers? Very nice. Yeah. What happened at last year's conference? I'm sure this was not a mistake by the California Attorney General, but there was a press conference stating that Amazon was being sued by California Attorney General for essentially this practice called buy box suppression. What could happen this year? Well, Shannon, there's a lot of rumors about the FTC filing a lawsuit against Amazon. I know they've been working on it for years. Of course, Lena Khan made a case for this when she was a graduate student that Amazon was a monopoly and should be busted up. I thought that it was imminent. I thought days or weeks away. And then some interesting news uh, hit the newswire that the FTC's uh, blocking of the Microsoft acquisition of Activision, the gaming company, had been rejected. So a federal judge came in and said, no, FTC, you do not have any legal standing to block Microsoft from acquiring this gaming company. So the rumor came out before the Microsoft story, Shannon. My question is, will that slow down Lena Khan and team from filing the lawsuit? They may it may have slowed them down, but I do think that it's going to be announced, and it wouldn't surprise me if they waited until September. Is it September? Is that the dates for the accelerate? Yeah, yeah, so, uh, September twelfth to the fourteenth. So it wouldn't um, surprise me if they wait until September to announce that they're suing Amazon for antitrust as they get out in front of sellers and announce all the great new releases for the year. Jason, any other news going on? I know there's been a lot. Um, happening. But what what other things, before we dive into today's episode content, what other things are impactful that sellers and brands need to be aware of right now? You know, everyone's been talking about the Prime Day results and we're still pulling all of our results together. But I got to tell you that we have seen just staggering growth, amazing growth year over year. And certainly when compared to an average daily sales number uh, for folks that, here's the key, who ran at least a lighting deal, more more specifically a prime exclusive deal. And it seems like most of the folks that ran those PEDs had the most impact uh, in conjunction with an increased ad spend. So we've been talking about this with month for months with our clients. Those who decided to participate had a very good couple of days. What was it, what was news to me, Shannon, was Amazon released we did 75 million more units sold or something like that, 300 compared to last year, 375 million units this year, which was about a 25% increase in units sold. But then Adobe came in and layered on top of that and said, we think that the growth rate year over year was only really 6%. So I made a LinkedIn post about this and said, I was kind of scratching my head, wait a minute, you can increase units sold by 25% 
but only increase revenue in an inflationary environment where everyone's prices are more this year than they were last year, and you're only really growing 6% year over year, I just don't see it. Uh, what, what may be happening is our view of this may be skewed because we've got the haves and the have-nots. The folks that did run PE deals had a re- PED, prime exclusive deals, had a great prime day. The rank improved and we're tracking that ranking to see if it's how sticky it is post uh, prime day. But there were a lot that didn't want to play. They're like, screw you, Amazon. I'm not doing a deal. I don't, I don't want to lose money on prime day. Even those guys had some growth. It was more along the lines of the 6% growth. So I'm scratching my head. I don't think Adobe has the real number. Amazon's not sharing it. My hunch is they probably had a double digit year over year growth. And we're going to have an episode uh, either next week or the following week. Once our data gets completed, Shannon, Liz LaValle is going to join us and we're going to break down Prime Day. And um, not only are we going to talk about the existing, the, the Prime Day that just ended, we're going to talk about preparation for the next Prime Day that'll happen or whatever they're calling it, the the October Prime event. Um, yeah. and how Prime Day 2. Can, <laughs> Prime Day 2, 3, whatever it is. Uh, so that the brands can start preparing for that now because they need to, certainly when it comes to inventory. Really good points. I mean, it all comes down to who has the data, right? Amazon has the data. And the question is, are they going to share the data and are, are they sharing the most accurate data and relevant data? One interesting thing that we saw, there's always something on the tactical level that pops up during the high volume of uh, Prime Day, Shannon. And, and one thing that we saw was uh, we had a client that had done a very deep discount on a sale price. They also had a coupon um, in, in, in lieu of a prime exclusive deal. And the the sale price was killed shortly after prime day ended. And immediately all of the uh, products started to get buy box suppressed, which has never happened before. In the past, if you could do a deep discount and then it ends after prime day, you don't get buy box suppressed. So we saw this across a couple of clients actually, not all of them. So it may have just been a glitch. We've notified Amazon and we let them know this is not right. Um, but we've also instituted some new procedures to pay attention to buy box suppression if the 30% discount goes to nothing overnight. I, I, I suspect it has to do with that price gouging AI tool that Amazon uses to prevent buy box, I, I should say, where they they suppress listings who they their AI thinks is price, uh, where there's price gouging involved. It's obviously not the case when there's a big discount holiday like Prime Day. So we're talking to Amazon about it, see if they can knock it off. In the meantime, we've instituted some new procedures so it doesn't happen again. Dimitri Dimitri Martin has a great, he has a great joke. He says, they say that people who live in glass houses shouldn't throw rocks. He goes, how about nobody throw rocks? No rocks throwing regardless of what kind of house you live in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, one more comment and then we'll dive into our, you know, our our, our eight cool things to talk about in terms of product imagery. But I I had an email conversation with Martin Hoible who, who put out some really great content that, you know, a lot of people complain on the vendor side about Amazon asking for lower price, lower price, but it's really driven by their channel control and their prices off of Amazon. And then we got into this interesting email conversation back and forth where I was like, you know, a lot of sellers and brands come back and say, well, I've got to charge more on Amazon because they take so much in fees, unlike some of the other channels, like certainly the B2B and even some of the other marketplaces where the fee structure is just a lot lower, at least right now. And, you know, Martin always reminds me, you know, at least in the United States, you guys can institute and enforce a map pricing policy. They can't even do that in Europe. So it's kind of, you could set your price on whatever channel you want to in Europe. It's really specific to the US market. I would like that practice to go away. Uh, I understand why Amazon does it. Uh, I know that when they're not considered the lowest price, they lose business. But if they really want to have the lowest price, they have another lever or two that they could pull, which is to lower the seller fee. I'd like buy box suppression to go away. If, if, if you're asking me what I want for Christmas, Shannon, this is what I want. I want buy box suppression to go away <laughs> and, and I want lower fees for sellers. That's what I want. Those are my two things. I'd ask for brand gating. Uh, that would be my, my Christmas present. Well, you know, brand from gating is all, it's like this holy grail. It's like uh, this thing that's out there that no one can actually find. Uh, you get it. Even the big brands will get a brand gate, but it's only a year and then they kill it. And then you go right back to having the problem again. So it makes sense if your brand committed to staying in stock and advertising. Yeah. It's it's actually in Amazon's best interest to gate it, to allow that brand to continue to own the buy box, run those ads. Amazon makes more money. Yeah. We've digressed, Jason, but- um, All but, good digressions, uh, and, uh, digressions and a lot of fun. So thanks, Shannon. Let's, let's dive in. You put this topic on the table and I love it. Top eight 
Amazon product image strategies. So, all right, before we get started into number one, what's the source of these images now, Shannon? There is a lot going on in the news about generative AI. Um, I know Amazon has policies about 3D renderings being used as the main image. Are we talking about how to source these images right now, or are we just talking about what to do regardless of where you source your image and get your image taken? AI has changed everything, right? In the last few months, we've seen that in the Amazon community, specifically on LinkedIn, where I, I do most of my social media. And in the next 12 to 18 months, it's going to continue to impact and change everything. I think there's a lot that needs to happen when it comes to IP, especially with generative AI. If you're sucking in images and stuff and then recreating images, okay, who really owns that? And I think that IP enforcement and some laws around AI are going to have to develop in really, really fast. Or I think that it's going to hurt us as a, you know, as a community, as, as a society. Uh, that said, you know, regardless of how people are creating these images, whether it's product photography, just graphic design, 3D renderings, or, or even a combination of AI and graphic designs and lifestyle, you could, you know, composite them all together. What we're really talking about is the final output, the result of how you use the images that you have in order to generate an impact on Amazon. So how to get higher click-through rate, for example, or improve the customer experience. So regardless of what you're using now, these methods can still apply, but it's always great to start with great high quality assets, right? If you will, and then and then build out from there. So yeah, and look, Shannon, you know, this isn't an AI episode. We'll have AI episode in the future. We are testing some tools uh, and some other cool, exciting stuff that we'll talk about in the coming months. But for now, we're just going to assume that you either took these images the old fashioned way with great models, or you used AI or some sort of generative. Uh, system. I, I think there are ways away from having some really great quality, tangible images, but they'll get there if they're not already. So let's dive in. Number one, Shannon, what is the number one thing that brands who are seven and eight figure sellers focus on when it comes to product images and how to make them work for their brand? Yeah. Well, one of them is definitely at the top, high quality 3D product renderings. And the reason why I love 3D product renderings is that it allows you to display the product in a way that you wouldn't normally be able to under normal conditions using standard photography and lighting. And so not only can you light it perfectly, but in some cases, if you're doing sort of an infographic, you can show the product sort of split apart. You can show semi-transparent aspects of the product. You can show the product sort of zoomed in and close up or how it functions in ways that you just cannot achieve with traditional photography or graphic design for that matter. And Amazon does have a, a, a rule, right, around using 3D images for your primary image specifically. They want it to be a real product. However, that said, 3D rendering has gotten so good that you can't tell the difference between a 3D render and a product photo and in almost every single case, if I was to show you a, a 3D render and a product photo, the 3D render would look better. And so what we're talking about is really providing the customer with a better experience. So from Amazon's standpoint, their goal is to be consumer centric. So this is a gray area, but to the point where if you can't tell if it's a 3D rendering or the actual product and a 3D rendering actually does a better job displaying the product to the customer, increasing the click-through rate and generating more sales for the for the seller and more fees for the for Amazon, I think it's a win-win. A couple of things that pop out on 3D renderings is you can make them brighter. The colors can be more intense many times than an actual photograph. And that really pays off on the search results page, right? But wait a minute, Shannon, doesn't Amazon have a TOS policy against 3D product renderings, certainly at least for the main image? Or are you saying it's so good now they can't tell. Uh, you know, you get Malia from our, our our presence department on to to give the final word on this, but I have yet to see or hear of a seller get their listing suppressed for using a 3D rendering in the primary product image. I haven't seen it. And especially if you're using a good quality 3D rendering, which we we have a top-notch 3D rendering artist that we use. But if you look at a supplement, any supplement on Amazon, on the first page, they're all 3D renderings for the primary yeah, product image. You're right. You know, when you have a situation where everybody's playing the same game, and again, we're not talking about being deceptive or trying to 
you know, change what the product is. We're just showing the product in a better light to be able to help the customer make a, a good purchase decision. That's that to me is a win-win. And those are those are areas where I'd say it's a little gray area. But honestly, what Amazon doesn't want you to do is have a 3D rendering A that looks like crap <laughs> or B that distorts the product so that the customer gets it and goes, this isn't what I thought it was. So use high quality 3D renderings. You don't have to use it on your primary product image, but it's it can be so vital for some of those uh, additional product images. Speaking of that last point, Shannon, I, I ordered some vitamin D from Ollie recently. And um, you know, they they've got this great packaging. It's super bright. And I, I thought I thought that the box or the container that the vitamin D came in would be super small. Like I thought that they had expanded it and playing the product image game really well for higher click-through rates. They got rid of a lot of the white space on the main image and that I was expecting something super small. That thing came, Shannon, and it is massive. Like it is huge. It is a huge container of vitamin D. And uh, that's like typically the opposite reaction I get when I receive a product that I buy at Amazon, you know, you could get something that's like an inch big. It looks massive on the main image because they've blown it up either with 3D or otherwise, and there's no white space. But Ollie's the opposite. Boy, that was it was a really nice surprise. That that's a really good product line. Yeah, they they really pop a, on the target aisle, you know, just on the end cap. Let, let's trade these off. I'm gonna take the next one. Number two, the image in the infographics and the additional images, the secondary images should position everything for your customer's avatar, right? Who is your customer? What is the demographic of your customer? Is your customer seniors like my mom who's 74 years old? Or is it someone like my daughter who's going on, who's 12 going on 17? And you want to make sure that you know who the target audience is and many times it's more than one target audience. And in those additional images, when you do what we call lifestyle images, you want to make sure that the people who are in your demographic are represented in your photography. And people want to see themselves in the product that they buy. You know, I, j- I just watched this amazing uh, animation movie, Spider-Man, Enter the Spider-Verse, that thing. And it's so cool. And it is, you know, it's really tailored for the Brooklyn uh, African American demographic and Hispanic demographic, and it's so unlike any other Superman I've ever seen. And it is really cool. And I can only imagine how many, you know, people of color and kids of color who are being attracted to that because they're speaking to them. They want to see themselves in that movie. And I just love that movie, and I love what they're doing with uh, with those characters. Um, it's the same thing with product sales. You know, if you know who's buying your product and you know their age, their demographic, their gender, their their basic socioeconomic uh, situation, and you can speak to those people who are buying it, they'll buy more of them. So know your customer and make sure that customer is represented in your images. And I would say along with that, you have to tailor the copy to speak to your avatar in the way that they speak, right? You know, it's, you're going to address a 16-year-old different than, than a 50 or 60-year-old. And um, the other, the only you know caveat I would say in terms of the lifestyle is you want to represent your target demographic, but you all also want to represent what your target demographic aspires to. So if you've got a health product, you know, for somebody who's got ripped abs, it's like you you really want to show somebody who's super beefed up and you know and ripped, not somebody who looks like me who wants to be like yeah. that. So we call uh, that, I would we say call like, that an aspiration your, 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 model, right? We want. We want to see what we will become I'm, whoa, by wait. interacting with this product. Maybe not necessarily who we are. All right. Next one, focus on the primary image. This one is so key. You cannot spend enough time on that primary product image. A-B test everything. We've had uh, Justin Chet, a, a PicFu on before. PicFu is a great tool to run some initial A-B tests, but Amazon also has Amazon experience to, uh, experiments to A-B test those product images and actually see which drive better click-through rate and ultimately better sales. But you're talking about how do you stand out and pop in search results? How do you convey the product in a way that makes makes it exciting? Uh, we've also had Danielle Boltzmann on uh, from Mindful Goods talking about what she calls eye candy, right? Including the product and the packaging or some ingredients or the, the content of the product outside of the packaging. So you kind of get something a little more than just a static image and that really does help 
increase that increase that click through rate, increase that conversion rate. And and honestly, Jason, if if your product packaging is is the primary product image and your primary product packaging sucks, it's yeah. time to upgrade. So yeah, you know, pick through that's even a great resource for that tool is use it to iterate and create better versions of your product packaging. And we've helped clients with this where their packaging was basically white on a white background on Amazon and it had no pop. There was no, there was no way to draw the customer's eye to that product to make them choose it over another. It didn't, the, the, the packaging didn't highlight the values uh, proposition of the benefits of the product. And so those are really great you know, concepts and key takeaways. You've got to spend time on your primary product image and you can't spend enough time to optimize it over time to yeah, deliver results. Yeah, think about results. it, Shannon. So much, I mean, before the uh, introduction of custom images, that main image is everywhere. It's on your sponsored ads, it's on your sponsored product ads. It could be in your sponsored brand ads. Uh, you're just, it's, it's your DSP ads, everything. That main image is showing up on the search bar or the search results for every search, people looking to buy a product like yours. So I think it's one of the biggest mistakes I see with brands who've been selling on Amazon for a long time. If they have not beefed up and made that primary image and to your point, the packaging pop. Back to my Christmas list of things I'd like uh, Amazon to introduce at Amazon Accelerate. I'd like that uh, experiments to include click-through rate. We, you can only get click-through rate through Ads Console right now, um, which, is, which is fine. You can measure that, but click-through rate is not an option for the um, manager experience uh, experiments uh, page uh, through the, the A-B testing in Seller Central. I wish, they, I wish that it did. I wish we could see organic impressions to clicks. Um, we have to do some fancy math on our team in order to, to figure out the click-through rate because the main image is all about the click-through. All of those things, main image, product title, review rating, and price and discounts. That's that's what driving click-through rate. The better the click-through rate, the better your ads and your organic listings are performing, but we just don't have enough data on organic and it's kind of a bummer. Hopefully, maybe, who knows, Shannon, maybe at Accelerate, they'll introduce that. All right, Jason, what what's the next one? Your images should describe your product for sure, but it should also make them feel something. When you get a higher conversion rate, if your image, if your listing, if your convert, if, if if the things that you are using to convert the product can make that shopper feel something, you will get more sales. In the additional images, if you're not telling that story to elicit some kind of an emotional response by pushing forward the benefits that the product brings, or you know, the best example that I can think of, Shannon, is. Um, our tagline that we used to infuse in every single one of our listings for my previous brand for Harbel, which was, um, you know, we sold air hockey tables and billiard tables, but our tagline was bringing friends and family together. You know, you look at that table and you're thinking about the thickness and everything, but then somebody says that to you or you read that and you're like, yeah, that's what this is about. That's what I want more of. I want to buy a product that's going to help me bring friends and family together. If you can accomplish that and your competitors aren't doing that, you will beat them. You know, in the film industry, we used to say, show, don't tell, right? If it's a visual medium. If you can show somebody instead of having somebody communicate it via dialogue, that's going to be better. On Amazon, you want to show and tell. So show friends and family together in those, in those you know, lifestyle photos. You know, a great example of that, Jenna, what does that look like in an image? Um, you know, we've got some coffee brands and we've got some secondary images that show a woman drinking a cup of coffee as if she just woke up and she just had her first cup of coffee and her face is just like, ah, oh, this is great, right? You could just see in her face that she is loving this cup of coffee. Not anywhere in that image do we have the coffee maker that we're selling. It's just the benefit. It's just showing what you get when you have a great cup of brewed coffee from this machine without showing the machine. I love the line that we make a decision to purchase with emotion and we, we justify it with logic after. Right, we think we use logic, yeah. but we don't. Emotion is what triggers the purchase, and then we justify it later by going, "Oh yeah, I really needed that." Yep, yep, exactly. Okay, Shan, that was number four. Make them feel something in their images. What's number five? Number five is show them how it works. A lot of times, people think, and again, if you go to webinars or attend conferences, people think the product image is all about selling. It's all about converting, but it's not. Because just because you got the sale doesn't mean that you're not going to get a return or a negative review. 
So it's also about supporting the customer experience. And so number five is really show them how it works. And those kind of visuals can include how to assemble it, uh, common uses, answers to common questions. It's what I call customer pre-service. You're answering the questions before they ask. And, and I cannot stress this enough, Jason. For most brands, there's one reason they're like, man, if I could just get this one thing across to customers, you know, people just have this one problem. You have to highlight the solution to that problem over and over and over again. You've got to do it in your images and your product features, your A plus content, your video, your advertising, because that's an obstacle to have, to, you know, for them to have a pro- positive customer experience. So, you know, in this case, it's basically showing them things that customers typically have issues understanding or overcome objections of why they might return it later, justifying the price, whatever the case may be. But that's so vital so that they get it and they already have an idea of how to put it together. Why? Because you had a product image that showed them. They already have an idea that it's going to go this way, not that way. And I can't tell you how many clients I've, I've, I've talked to, I've coached, we've worked with, who they had a problem and it never occurred to them to address it proactively in the product image. And I'm telling you, you got to do it. Yeah, I mean, my my only gentle pushback is on the assembly. If you do show the, how the thing is assembled, make it look easy. Yeah, the last thing someone wants to do is be, oh, this is a lot of work. I don't want it. Now, there's a double-edged sword there. You make it a high return rate if you make it look easier than it actually is. I personally like to show the assembly of things after the sale just to prepare them for what's showing up. I learned that from my my co-author, Rick Cesari, my old friend. Who I, I my the only video I had this is an extreme situation Shannon the only video that I had for this ping pong table was showing some guys in China putting it together and Rick looked at it and goes oh that's a it's a nice video looks like work and he didn't say anything else I knew exactly what he was saying oh god we need to show the benefits of this and then we replaced those videos and images with families smiling and having fun playing ping pong and conversion weights went through the roof so. But yeah, the more information that you can put into these images, the better. And that which leads me to number six, Shannon, is uh, providing the vital information about the product that maybe the shopper wouldn't think about. And here's the point here, infographics. If you have an additional image that doesn't have words in it or isn't describing something about either the benefit or a feature of your product, it's a lost opportunity. No image should be without words, uh, except for the main image, which is the most highly restricted. And typically people won't read the bullet points. Occasionally they'll read the A plus details, but most folks, and you know, I, I'm pulling a number out of the air here, but I'd say 70% of people won't read it if it's not in the picture. So give all that important stuff like size charts in an image, ingredients that maybe people want to uh, buy a product because of or avoid a product with certain ingredients, uh, product compatibility, what's included, all of that stuff. Make use of every single image available to tell a story, to give a product feature, and never forget to put the benefits. Yeah, it's it's a great example. I mean, Jason, like I said, you get seller questions or you know customer questions that come in and show up in that seller uh, section on the detail page. And if you have multiple people saying, does it include the adapter? I bought it, but I don't know if it includes an adapter. Well, have an infographic that shows what it includes. Does it include an adapter? Maybe it doesn't. And if it doesn't, you know, I actually was looking at a product the other day. It said, this does not include an adapter. If you're looking for an adapter, here's the one to buy. It was, you know, it was smart marketing, but you you can tell they did it because it had enough people complain yeah. that it didn't have an adapter. You, have, you had to pro- proactively address also, it. Also, seller, add the adapter. Come on. All right, number seven, make it mobile friendly. Guys, remember 72% of traffic going to Amazon is viewed on a mobile device. I think in the next year, it's only gonna go up. I mean, it can only go up you know, to, to some extent, but I mean, who knows? Maybe in 10 years, we won't even have desktops. It'll, everything will be on mobile. You've gotta make sure that you can read all that great text that Jason just talked about on a smartphone. And so that's something that it's a rigor that's part of our process that we do to analyze our clients' listings before they go live and make sure, can you read the font? If we've taken all this time to provide great features and benefits or ingredients, whatever the case may be, on an image, make sure you can read it on a mobile device. Yeah, Shannon, I'm trying to think of the last 20 times I bought something on Amazon, 
And, you know, we moved recently up here to Portland, so we've been buying all kinds of stuff. I don't think any of it was bought on the desktop. I think everything I've bought, the last 20 orders have been on mobile. And um, it's true. If if I have to pinch and scroll and make things larger, it's a pain in the neck and I'm less likely to buy. So make it mobile friendly. I know every time you talk to a prospect here at Avenue 7, you've got your phone up and you're looking at their your listings. It still amazes me how many images are out there that don't have good mobile friendly stuff. We're in a mobile world right now. Last but not least, share your brand story, your values, your commitments. You know, this can be an origin story, what you believe and your commitment to quality materials, safe ingredients, sustainability, ethical sourcing, whatever it may be, the things that you wake up about that you're most proud about your business tell that story in an image. Make sure the image makes sense, add words to it. And of course, if we're talking about images beyond the above the fold, down into the brand story, you can really do a nice job of talking about your brand, but you could do it in those additional images as well. And maybe later on in the scroll from the mobile device, but it's really impactful. You know, folks who think about things with their frontal lobe uh, don't understand people who think about it with their amygdala, their, their lizard brain, their feeling sense. And your conversions will improve if you have a compelling story for why you started this business, what gets you up in the morning in order to provide these quality products and what's important to you. If they know that and they align, now you got a customer for life. Yeah. I mean, I really think it piggybacks off the the previous point that we talked about, which is, you know, give people an emotion. Um, if you can create an emotional connection by telling your brand story, what inspired you to do it. It really does instill confidence and people get a chance, even though it's brief, to feel like they know you just a little bit and that they trust you. And that if they have an issue with the product or a question that they can reach out to you and as a brand owner, you care and are going to be willing to help them through that process. I think it does make a huge difference. And I'm amazed where we we, we actually just brought an amazing brand uh, a couple weeks ago. And I went onto their website and they have all these great values. I mean, things that they are committed to sustainability. They've got some great programs that give back. They're committed to kids grow up and to be independent and so that they can make an impact on the world. Like these great value propositions and none of it, none of it was on their Amazon listing. It's like they had just sort of completely ignored it and forgotten about it. And that's something that I I, I highlighted for our team and said, guys, we've got we to gotta share some of these values from the website that are so vital and core to this brand on the Amazon listing, because as you said, it will make a difference uh, in their click-through rate, you know, certainly their conversions and ultimately their sales and the customer satisfaction. I love it, Shannon. I'm all, I'm oftentimes reminded of things that my, uh, my wife says, and, uh, she talks about this in terms of management. You know, she's been in corporate America for 25 years. You know, she says, you know, people don't remember what people tell them, but they remember how they make them feel. And whenever she tells me that when she's talking about, you know, teams that she's managing or, when I'm communicating about teams I'm managing, she brings that up. And I think about this in terms of products as well. The product, when they go to that details page, when they go to your A+, when they go to their brand store, if you don't make them feel something and you don't tell them that you're about more than just getting a sale, that's just not going to build you loyal followers. It's just not. Yeah, it's a lost opportunity. Yeah, it's a lost opportunity. Exactly. So we did it, Shannon. We got through all eight really good, meaningful things to consider. Imagery is everything. Uh, an image is worth a thousand words. And if you can carry the, all of those lessons from the images onto your video as well, even better, make sure you invest in quality product images, whether you do it the old school way or with some really good AI. If AI generates an image for you, A, make sure you're not violating someone's IP, but B, make sure it looks real. If it looks fake, it's not going to cut the mustard. So get rid of it. Invest in good quality product images. Make sure that you've got lifestyle folks who match your customer demographics in those images, pay attention to customer feedback and trends and optimize everything relentlessly. Remember what works today may not work a quarter or two quarters from now. So constantly evaluate that, constantly look at the KPIs and re opt optimize relentlessly. Shannon, any final words before we let our audience go? If this is overwhelming to you and you're looking for an experienced team to just do this for you, <laughs> Avenue 7 Media would be happy to take your call. I'd love to book a discovery call with you. Uh, you can visit us at day2podcast.com. 
I mean, it, it really is overwhelming, Jason. When we think about everything we've talked about just for product images, that is literally just for one part of your product detail page. And we haven't even talked about titles and SEO and product features and A plus and video. And that's just for one product. And now you have to do it for every product. That's why you built this incredible team. It's why I'm so honored to be part of this company because we really are, we're not just adhering to best practices, we're building and creating best practices that I think set the standard in the industry. And you know, it makes me proud to be part of this company and I love what our team is doing. So if this excites you, but overwhelms you a little bit, <laughs> pick up the phone, give us a call or reach out via the website. We'd love to talk to you. Thank you, Shannon. And thanks to our viewers and listeners. Thanks for listening and happy selling.